Yeah, and, and what I've found as I'm talking more and more about the reality we live in um, is it does, if you like, um, take the edge off um, the fear of what's happening. Because it is funny, really. Um, I, 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 I think that when we find out everything that's going on and the nature of what we're experiencing and what's behind it, I think we're going to laugh for weeks. I do. I think we're going to laugh for weeks. And we thought it was that. Oh, my God. Um, and the whole thrust of the maze and opening and closing doors since 19, uh, 2003 for me, and it's getting more and more deep and deep and deeper, is what is reality, who are we, what are we doing here, and how do we interact with it? And it's very clear to me that this is a virtual reality uh, universe of enormous advancement compared with what we perceive to be virtual reality simulations in, in this world. And, you know, this is not just supposition. This is provable yeah. scientific fact. I mean, it's so good that we think it's real. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Uh, you know, um, the five senses just decode vibrational information into electrical signals, send it to the brain, and the brain decodes it into this construct that we think is outside there, but it's actually inside us. The only place this world exists, a so-called so solid world, a three-dimensional world, is out there. Is uh, out there, we think. But actually, it doesn't exist out there. Out there is just vibrational fields. It exists in here as we construct it. Um, and even the brain is a is a decoded construct to the, uh, uh, as well. It's, it's a, on an energetic level that we do the decoding, really. Um, and this is very, very important because what the manipula manipulators do, because they've hoarded this basic knowledge and passed it over at the highest level of the secret society network That's and right. sucked yep. it out of public circulation, yep. they know that if we look out there for answers, believing that there is an out there, instead of an illusory, project, uh, illusory projection that's going on in here, then we're never going to change anything. Yeah. Never going to change anything. And uh, once you go, ah, there's no out there, so where's it coming from? Oh, it's coming from in here, so this is where I have to change. Oh, there you go. It's what I call, um, and this is what most people do, because of the suppression of this understanding, is they stand in the movie theater and they shout at the screen because they don't like the movie. Uh -huh. and, People say, you're crazy, you're never going to change the movie, shout at the screen, go back to the projection room, change the reel if you don't like the movie. And the, the projection is deep within us, you know. The, some research I saw recently says that uh, about f only 5% of behavior and decisions that we make are with the conscious mind. I would actually, I would say that's not correct, personally. I'd say 100% of what happens in this three-dimensional reality, it's only in our head, actually is a projection. And the con conscious mind is actually not the decision maker yeah. at all. Yeah. It's the observer and experiencer of it. Yeah. Um, and um, it's like, it literally is the same principle as a, a movie um, projector which comes from within, within what we call the subconscious, where all those patterns are there which we're being influenced by and are, are affecting our projection and our reading of it. And it comes out of the subconscious. And by the time it hits the screen in here, symbolically on the movie theater, it's a done deal. This is where the change has to take place within us to change the projection, which is our conscious mind's experience. And people are so caught in the conscious mind as, as that's the only level. I mean, they hear talk about subconscious and all that stuff, but really, it's, I, I, I thought it. Well, how come that experiments have shown that um, the electrical changes and muscular changes um, to make an action happen um, are, happen a split second before the conscious mind has decided to do it? It's because they're playing it out. And so th this talk about we must go within, you know, this new age must go within. Um, uh, and, and there's much about the new age I would challenge, but uh, this basic uh, theme is absolutely right, I would say. Um, and what the whole conspiracy is trying to do is get us to look out there. Let's go and protest, let's go and do this, let's go and do that. And you protest and you have a million people on the streets of London protesting against war. And what happens? The war goes on and then they start another bugger. And it's just more dialectic. Yeah, we... Yep need 
to change the projection. Mm. Um, and well, the this is um, actually something that we've come around to, and we're you know we're aware that consciousness is where the change has to happen, and then consciousness is actually also where you have to apply the change in your vision of reality. You can't actually just stop there. It actually has to permeate everything. So it needs to be embodied in this body, but we have to talk about who's in control. So if consciousness is in control, and I can use this to do, for example, what we're doing here, which can be used to further change and push the change and help the change, then, then this is a good thing. But it's not enough, in other words, just to go in like Buddha and simply sit in your mind and do nothing. Because doing nothing is also not the answer. We actually came here with a purpose. A game is being played out here. And as you, if you stay in both consciousness and you're able to, to change your inner self and then mirror it outside and facilitate, which is what you're doing, obviously. And obviously you, you, you embody this in your life. And, and what we've been doing with Camelot is we're also talking about you can't actually demonstrate in the streets and get real results because it's, it's really, you know, action, reaction. Exactly. It's really that. I agree. But, but you can join minds and meditate. There are places for action that are actually really proactive and can change the world in a positive way. So it's, it's kind of, it's, it's a very interesting, you know, dilemma for people that they have to actually embody the change that they see and live it. That's, that's, I, you know, you cannot be a contradiction to what's inside. It, it doesn't work. There has to be a through line. Well, I would, I, I would, put, it, I would put it this way. I would say that, um, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, that this reality, uh, this holographic, illusory, physical construct which we put together in our heads and it's like a holographic internet I call it that is 100% a projection and by the time it hits this screen it's a done deal mm -hmm. uh, in our experience but a lot of people I come across and heard they do um, think that if you just sit and meditate or just go within then that's all you need to do but this is a projection, and it's a projection from somewhere. So this projection is a, um, an open book of the inner us, individually and collectively. So what we play out in this experience says everything about our state of being. And, and you, can, you can say go within and you can use it as an excuse to not go without. And you can go within, always I go within and I meditate. Okay, so what are you do, what's happening in the projection as a result of what you're doing? The only projection uh, that you're affecting is you sitting cross-legged in the corner. What else is changing? Yes, of course, you can change things vibrationally to, to an extent. But, you know, what is happening in the world is saying what's happening in us. And we kind of miss that connection. So if we're doing nothing to um, make a contribution to the kind of world we like to live in, then it, uh, in, the, in the physical world, then that says something about the state of us within that we're not doing that. Um, and uh, there's, I see so many um, excuses being made by people who have become to a certain extent aware of some of what's going on so that they can justify to themselves why they're doing nothing. People say to me, you don't tell us what to do. And I think, well, actually, I, I talked about becoming conscious and all that stuff. I think, you know, that's the start. But it ain't for me to tell you what to do. Exactly. And if you think that, that I have to tell you what to do, then you're not listening. Because this is about taking power back to the point where we project, rather than looking out here 
at a done deal.